ஹலோ அண்ட் வெல்கம் டு பியூர் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சஸ் ஆன்லைன் சத்சங் தட் சத்சங் இஸ் அன் ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி ஃபார் எவ்ரிபடி டு மீட் அண்ட் டிஸ்கஸ் த ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் மேட்டர்ஸ் அண்ட் வி ஆல்சோ கண்டக்ட் த ப்ரோக்ராம் இன் திஸ் சத்சங் டாபிக்ஸ் ரிலேட்டட் டு த ப்ரோக்ராம் அண்ட் த ஆக்டிவிட்டீஸ் ஆஃப் த ப்ரோக்ராம் ஸோ ஆல் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஆர் மோஸ்ட் வெல்கம் பரஞ்சித் இஸ் ஆஸ்கிங் ப்ராக்டிசிங் ஐ ஆம் நத்திங் ஆர் ஐ ஆம் எவ்ரி திங் இஸ் நாட் ஹார்ட் பட் வென் டூயிங் ப்ராக்டிக்கல் இன் ரியல் லைஃப் இட் இஸ் லிட்டில் ஹார்டர் சம்டைம்ஸ் ப்ளீஸ் அட்வைஸ் it will be a matter of practice only just like when you start riding the bicycle it is not that easy you will fall sometimes you will take some time to learn it and it will be very difficult in the crowded place and on turns and on uh, uphill but eventually you will learn it and then the bicycle will ride itself same way when you learn to drive the car it is very difficult what levers to press where are all the buttons and all and when something comes from front while you're driving at a speed it's very hard to control it but with enough practice you become expert in that so you have started this practice since only one or two months one month probably wait till five or six yes some weeks so wait for three or four years at least you will become expert the more you practice the faster you will uh, master it so those who are thinking that today i started the practice no results at all so hard it is not magic it will take time and how much time it will take depends on the interest of the person it depends on the effort although it does not take effort but the effort is initial effort to let go of your ordinary routine life and remain in this light of knowledge this is like breaking the whole old habit you are habitual of living in darkness now it will take some time so keep doing the practice that is the only solution the, the shortcuts were told you know what can we do to remember it easily and so on reminders and all so initially people practice all these things so you can also try those things Yeah, I guess Singh, can I ask a question? Sure, you can ask. Hello? Yeah, hello. Uh, Guruji, uh, there was a thought that let the higher layers uh, with lower layers. Uh, it just popped up during meditation uh, because I'm seeing that a lot of lower layers uh, when manipulated, when trying to uh, m- make them balanced, sometimes uh, I screw up even more in that. So I've gone through an experience when I've realized that sometimes because I was having some difficult times lately, uh my awareness behind all that despite it was uh sometimes so powerful but uh, i've noticed that uh my will to stay aware despite all of that in the end liberated me a bit uh so uh simply i am asking if uh, we can just practice awareness and ignore all the rest uh is this essential is this enough thank you you can practice being aware but you cannot ignore your day to day life that will not be possible and that is not also recommended probably that's what you are asking if i understood correctly so the awareness is not going to interfere in your daily life just do the same things that you do every day but in awareness it is not a job which must be done after leaving all the jobs after completing all the jobs no you need to do all your daily activities in awareness knowing fully that i am the witness and whatever is happening is happening automatically through this body and then whatever is the experience is totally false simply keeping this awareness on 
and doing your all the uh, activities normally this is the recommended way and uh, initially there will be problems like he was saying that uh, my awareness goes away when i am doing something important or some uh, difficult situation is there so there is nothing to worry just solve the difficult situation just complete your difficult work whatever you are doing and then come back in awareness this will be initial issues and then more practice will enable you to remain aware in those difficult situations also it is a step by step process or you can say it is a gradual process it will not happen overnight the knowledge happens overnight yes the knowledge happens in few minutes it is simply shown that look this is the truth and then the awareness takes its time it is matter of habit and uh, for some people even the knowledge verification will take time when they are listening to me or somebody else uh, they will understand that look this is like this my essence is the witness and whatever it witnesses uh, is illusion that day they understand this but next day there are doubts and after one week they forget so for some people it will be a difficult matter to even verify the knowledge then they are told that think about it meditate on it contemplate about it spend time on it why does that happen because they are very new seekers newcomers they are not ripe enough to abide in the knowledge immediately so not only they go back in unawareness they go back in ignorance many times it happens they go back to their old identification with the body mind fully forgetting the knowledge so that is why we have all these uh, activities like satsang like the program where the body mind is forced to break this habit of ignorance and that is why those who do the program they face very little problem because for 6 months they are involved in nothing but the path of knowledge so those who are ready they will face no difficulties they will complete the step by step procedure and they will abide in awareness whenever the ripening happens whenever the right time up arrives that will be continuous and broken awareness that is the waking state we are now making the efforts to bring the awareness in dreaming and projected states and sleep state and so on that is the advanced practice so that will take time everybody has their own abilities and they proceed uh, according to them and they all take different times knowing is very simple then implementing it in, in your life it takes a little bit of time and effort those who are made for this they don't do any practice they know what i am and they know what is illusion and they are simply happy with whatever they are they are not trying to be aware in waking and they are not trying to uh, mess with their sleep <laughs> and and death and whatever in the occult practices they are happy with that state also it is perfectly natural so there are many kinds of seekers and in this setup of pure experiences and bodhi vartha and all that we are helping all kinds of seekers all kinds starting from the simplest possible to the most advanced possible seeker all get directions totally depends on the interest of the seeker how interested you are i have seen so many many people they are, they are so interested that they want to come here and practice they want to stay with me here and practice and i say okay you are very much interested but that is not really required so totally depends on the intensity that will determine your success and that is true for many people many uh, in many situations not only in spirituality in science in arts in your business in your job in your day to day life so everything depends on how badly you want it okay he's saying my other question is about the ego sure you can ask it i've i've come to realize that uh a lot of things are just built on beliefs in and that including uh the self itself or a sense of identity uh so when in extreme cases of awareness it's like even the thought processes even the all the assumptions all what's going on in the mind 
uh, is based on the assumption that uh, you are liberated. There is no person. There is no person whatsoever. There is no identity whatsoever. But in other cases, I don't know how, even how I switch from that to to another. And uh, the, my question basically is is the, that self uh, real or not how what can we do about it i know sometimes it looks like it's it's an illusion already it's uh, even the idea of ego is just an idea it's just a concept but uh, uh i don't know uh, uh there are people who looks like they they have more egoic tendencies than others i mean uh, what can you complain uh, contemplate about this guruji please i uh, i don't know even have a specific question uh, sorry for that. thank you for your time some people have more egoic tendencies some have less it is perfectly natural and uh, when you are practicing awareness the ego is also seen in the light of awareness and that should not be suppressed if it is more simply watch it more if it if the ego activities are more you need to pay more attention now you need to become immediately aware and should not suppress these activities you will find that uh, they will reduce the ego tendency will reduce like this because you are watching it and uh, the ego should not be killed it should be controlled control means that is a very important activity of the mind and it should be utilized wherever it is needed but it should not be encouraged when it is not really needed so simply sit and watch when it is not needed watch the play of the ego and uh, when it is absolutely necessary that action must be taken and that action must also happen in pure awareness so many people think that the ego is a problem in awareness no it is not a problem the awareness is above the ego it does not replace the ego it illuminates the ego and the person need not disappear and the body mind need not disappear this illusion should continue as it is or probably even better and it will become better once it is illuminated by the awareness and you will know this with time you will know this with systematic practice hopefully that uh, answers your question so we'll go to the next question now paramjeet is asking may i ask you to explain some of the tendencies of bodhi sattva although we do not know it directly but we can guess logically a little bit what is the bodhi sattva tendency the first important tendency is to help others they do not have their own desires or they have very little desires and the main desire is simply to serve serve others and the next tendency is that they do not want to disappear no dissolution is expected or is desired they have known that this play is the best play and they like to play it can there be no worldly desire can there be no intellectual desire there that is not true uh, according to me they can have worldly desires it is a play for them they can have intellectual artistic desires even spiritual desires they want to know the scriptures and so on it is possible and they take on these desires simply to sustain in a body or in a lower layer they create these activities for themselves so that they can manifest there remember the layers of mind are simply activity of mind there is no actual structure there besides the activity the layers will perceived as activity only so they start these activities and depending on where they want to serve they take on the activities now a good example is amitabh or uh, alokiteshwar in buddhism because the bodhi sattvas the concept comes from buddhism or manjushri look at manjushri looks like a prince and uh, why are they so much involved in physicality when they are bodhi sattvas 
so there are many uh, wrong notions about bodhisattvas that they are like uh, totally like beggars on the street <laughs> and monks and they live in himalayas and all no anybody who has exhausted their own tendencies and is now holding only one desire to serve they are entitled to be called as bodhisattvas now the rest of the stuff about bodhisattvas does not really matter this one quality overpowers the other qualities and they will assume any form they will assume any shape any world any body in order to carry out their agenda which is liberation of all living beings why did i say any form or any shape because they can do that they can appear as animals or objects also this is very funny but we, we cannot provide a proof of that but in order to facilitate their play it is play to liberate all people all organisms all creatures is simply a play because that will never be completed you see so they know these things and they come up with very creative ideas and very funny ideas they do not make it serious that is one more quality that when they play like this they are never serious about it they will uh, make some twists they will make it uh, like a <laughs> Uh, suspense movie so many of the gurus are heading towards bodhisattvas in the rank of bodhisattva so i know when who had a lot of qualities of bodhisattva and he is the osho rajneesh because i could study him more i know what qualities he had so that will be very very shocking to many people who have very you can say pure image of bodhisattva no they have no limitations you can identify them like these there is one more person that i heard about recently who resembles like this and that is the guru of uh, ishwar puri ji i forgot his name right now i can't recall but he had all these tendencies yes huzur baba saman singh so thank you to vandita for reminding so if you listen to and the story is told by ishwar ji you will see how playful this character was he lied so many times and and he uplifted so many people and he lived a normal life probably he earned the money and so on he was very practical about money and things but he could appear in the battlefield and rescue the soldiers his own disciples from the battle and so on you see so for the bodhisattva no work is a burden if it is helping it as student if it is helping their disciples they do it they will never say i am such a big guru why should i do this they will also come and clean your house if you want them they will arrange for your food they will they will fulfill any of your desires if they can in the limits of the illusion you know because what puts limits on the bodhisattva the devi illusion the laws of the that world the limit they will break the laws now and then when required because they are so powerful but uh, normally they do not use any powers so i can go on like this you know even one whole book can be written about this thing probably there are already books so those who are interested go and study it's a very interesting topic and uh, you will see whether i am heading towards this kind of bodhisattva position if you do a self evaluation use our latest app for evaluating there are some questions about bodhisattva tendencies and i have seen that few people are already showing those tendencies they have started the play they are letting go of their human nature little bit little by little sometimes it is very wild tendencies will be seen early in your seeking whether you want the whole knowledge for yourself do not even want to talk to somebody else about the knowledge somebody is asking you help and you say give me money or i don't have time to help you and now the chances of becoming the bodhisattva are less but if spirituality is your top priority in life and the earning eating drinking you are doing it in your spare time and that means there is a lot of potential so i can identify these tendencies and i guide these people to sharpen them to cultivate these tendencies it is not very difficult to find it vandita is asking whenever there is a notification in the phone one or the other digit is seen repeating three or four times on the screen this is happening a lot it's very good they are signs from the universe 
so why do they happen that uh, when you take an important decision in your, in your life usually there are signs if you have a old guru past life guru which many of you must be having and they have this method of communicating using coincidences a coincidence is created it is very easy to create in this illusion that is why they use this method a lot a coincidence is created which is not your normal everyday random life it has a special meaning which your mind can recognize you pay attention and you can see from the numbers that you can guess from the numbers that what are they trying to communicate what is the message and everybody interprets the message very differently usually this will happen only when you have taken the right decision in your life let us say you have chosen a guru and these numbers they start appearing that means your decision was right you have chosen a path or you have chosen a new job a new partner and all this important decisions are taken and sometimes these people are then notified that uh, you have done a good job what if you make a mistake there are notifications for that also but they are not so obvious usually they do not interfere when you have already made the decision then the guru will not interfere the guru wants you to make the mistake and learn from it unless it is a very very bad kind of mistake graham is asking can you talk about the role of love for the seeker and in the existence the seeker should know that i am the existence and then love becomes this knowledge of oneness very easy swapna is asking how and why desires arise desires arise in the mind which is a storehouse of impressions what are these impressions they are your past experiences past actions past likes and dislikes they are all stored in the memory and if the and the creature wants to work this body mind wants to do an action there must be a force there must be a motivation to start that action that motivation is called the desire so the desire starts from the memory and ends in an action and then the actions they have fruits there are some consequences of these actions that is your karma and that gets stored back in the memory the new desires arise suppose the action was fruitful it was positive then the mind wants to do it more it was negative then the mind says i'll do something else not this one that is also a desire to not do this action is a also a desire so because this is a force this is what is called life without this kind of activity the creature will simply sit there will not do anything will not eat will not drink and obviously you can guess there won't be any life so the this activity of desiring enables life it is the most important action to stay alive you do not know how many desires are there try to stop breathing for a second and you will see that there is a big desire to breathe although it, that action is happening automatically we do not pay any attention do not eat for a day and you will see there is a big desire to eat as long as the life processes continue without any problem we do not even see the desires when do we start seeing the desires as problems when they are not fulfilled now suppose you get a desire because of your past impressions or you have seen somebody doing that action and the mind says i'll also do it and these kind of desires which are not your own they are very difficult to fulfill and then this unfulfilled desires they cause suffering suffering is simply a thought that i could not do this this the mind is punishing itself the mind is saying the desire was generated but it was not fulfilled so it produces punishment and when the desire is fulfilled it produces a reward which is what you call happiness ordinary person thinks that is happiness but it is simply the reward produced by the body or the mind because and desire was fulfilled and as soon as that reward is taken it is experienced more desires come now i want something more why is that why it never stops because the life never stops the creatures who do not desire anything they disappear they die out and the natural selection selects only the structures or the creatures or the mind 
that produce continuous desires so that this life can be sustained continuously so that is why we say the desire is the main force it is the energy behind life now you can choose your desires remember some desires are coming from outside you saw your neighbor driving a new car and then a desire comes in you i should also buy a new car remember this is not your desire it is not coming from your own experiences or your own actions it is coming from somewhere else it is a fake desire which is imposed on this mind there is expectation of happiness there but normally it's totally unnecessary your life is running very nicely without this new car so you can choose you can desire not to act on that and how is it possible to have only the correct desires it is possible when you are aware that this is simply mental activity of some kind when will you become aware when you have the knowledge of who you are you are the one who is desireless you are the one who is witnessing this play of desires fulfillment unfulfillment happiness reward punishment suffering you are the one once you know this you can separate the desire from yourself you can either stop it or you can continue fulfilling it then it becomes like a play how many desires i want to fulfill today and like this now the arising of desire is not a problem because it is simply entertainment and you will slowly see that in the light of awareness the desires they burn away only those will remain that are absolutely necessary for the life and in the end they will also disappear which means this creature will disappear it will die and it will never be born at least not as a human why because the desire is the cause of birth also so awareness looks like a small practice easy practice but it is the most powerful practice in this universe how will you be become aware start by self knowledge self realization know who you are this is the beginning premjit is asking sometimes when i pray to guru field start with guru brahma and i say my guru is tarun pradhan ji please help i feel connection at my crown chakra and feel very different kind of joy peace and question answered thanks for being there for you are most welcome and those who pray sincerely lovingly to the guru field they will be given this kind of signs but uh, you should not become habitual of these things should not become addicted to the guru field live your life normally in complete awareness those uh, who are expecting that why don't i get all these sensations and strange experiences like numbers and all there is nothing wrong you, you need not get them everybody has different requirements so they are given different experiences you got the knowledge properly that was your requirement isn't it so all the coincidences were arranged for you to come here and get the knowledge and that is the bigger miracle than feeling something tingling on the crown chakra or hi this chakra or that chakra that is boring compared to what has happened to your life so if you get these kind of sensations simply enjoy and forget about them they are not the big thing you see the numbers simply say thank you and then continue with your life do something better which is fulfilling your preallocation service so on so you do not make these sensations and uh, whatever you are smells and taste you are getting as your goal they nothing to do with spirituality okay so we'll end today's satsang here hopefully everybody got their questions answered and uh, thank you everybody for attending today's satsang i'll see you next time